On today's video, we're going to go over rooting your Ender 3 V3 KE. So the first thing you're going to need to do before we start this process is make sure you're on the latest version of Creality's firmware for this printer. At the time of recording the video, it's 1.1.0.12, and I put a link to that firmware down in the video description. To update this firmware, if you're already on the network with the printer, you can go ahead and update it right from the LCD screen. Or if your printer is not connected to the internet, you can go ahead and put it on a USB thumb drive and then pop it into the printer screen and it will detect that file and ask you if you want to update. After updating to the latest firmware, I would highly recommend doing a factory reset on the printer and running through the initial setup guide and you're going to need to have it connected to your network. We're going to be using some scripts to go ahead and install the different packages and add-ons that we need to do this upgrade. I've linked everything in the video description. There is a link to the GitHub repo that we're using that has the installation scripts. You'll notice that this GitHub is actually branded for the K1 and K1 Max, but because this system uses the same Ingenic X2000E processor, these scripts also work on this machine. So without further ado, we're going to show you how to go ahead and enable root. We're going to connect into the printer using a terminal program. In this case, we're going to be using PuTTY, which I've also linked in the video description. And then once we are connected into the machine, we're going to install a bunch of packages that will allow us to get rid of Creality's cloud crap on the machine. And instead of using Creality's web interface, we're going to install the much nicer mainsail interface that most Clipper users prefer these days. After we've got all the interface updates done, the last part of the video will be enabling support for third-party webcams. Now, if you don't want to use a third-party webcam, you don't have to do this last step, but I do highly recommend it as there's a lot better camera options on the market other than Creality's AI cloud camera. So with the printer powered on, we're going to need to go to the settings button here and go to network. Go ahead and make a note of the IP address your printer has on the network. If you do not have it connected to the network, go ahead and do that now before continuing. Go back to the system tab and scroll down and make sure you're on the latest version. You can see here I'm on 1.1.0.12 and we have root account information. Go ahead and click the I have read and understand the risks of root login. And then we're going to have to wait 30 seconds for some reason before we can click the OK button. One hour later. Go ahead and click the OK button. And now we have root access. So we're going to switch over to the computer. So to make sure our machine is actually on our network, go ahead and open a web browser and put the IP address of the machine into the browser. You should see this Creality Print screen. Go ahead and open up your terminal program. In my case, I'm going to be using PuTTY. I'm going to put the IP address in the hostname field and then click open. Go ahead and type the login credentials, which is root for the username and Creality 2023 with a capital C for the password. I'd recommend making this window larger so we can see everything that shows up on the menus. Go ahead and click the helper script installation link in the video description. And then we're going to copy this first command here, which will pull down the installation script. I'm going to right click and paste this in, then hit enter. And then I'm going to run the script with this second command here and hit enter. Now, the first thing we're going to do is install a bunch of the applications and other add-ons we need. So I'm going to press one, enter. And we're going to install Moonraker and NGINX, which is the first option. So again, one and then enter. You're going to confirm. And then give this a couple minutes to install the services. We just installed Moonraker and NGINX. The next one is to install Mainsail. This is the interface I prefer for Clipper. If you want to use Fluid, you can install Fluid instead. But for this video, we're going to be using Mainsail. So we're going to press three and then hit enter, confirm. And again, let it install. Now we can double check if Mainsail actually started by going back to the browser window and we're going to append colon 4409 and we should get the Mainsail interface. The next thing you're gonna to want to do is install the Supervisor Lite. This will make sure things keep running if they crash. 
We're gonna enter four and then hit enter and confirm the installation. The other thing we're going to want to install is Endware. This will allow us to install other options into the actual Linux subsystem. So five, enter, confirm. Now after this, we're gonna go ahead and replace Creality's Cloud Crap with Mainsail. So I'm gonna press B, enter, and then we're gonna to want to go to number three, enter, and we're going to remove the Creality Web Interface, which is option three, and then press enter, confirm, enter. Now if we go directly to the IP address, instead of seeing Creality screen, we should see Mainsail. So just like that, now our printer no longer is beholden to Creality's cloud system. We're using the Mainsail interface instead of Creality's bastardized version of a web interface for Clipper. We can go back to the main menu, and if you want to go ahead and look around and see what other options we have, they have a lot of different stuff in here, but we're just going over the basics right now in this video. I'm going to go ahead and hit Q to exit, and now the next part is going to be using a USB webcam with the system. So now the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to set up our third-party webcam. I linked our guide in the video description below, but we're gonna run through this really quick. We're gonna to want to identify what device our webcam is showing up, and we can do that by running this v4l-ctl command, followed by the list devices option. So I'm gonna paste that in. And right now I have no camera connected. And I want you guys to run this with no camera connected so you can see what is already there because there's internal video devices on the processor and graphics chip in this SBC that show up as video devices. Now I'm going to plug my easy camera into the machine and all you need to do is press the up arrow to bring back the last command we type and hit enter. Now we can see here my easy cam is showing up on slash dev slash video four. We want to use one of the paths that has the video in it, not the media path. Now that we know the camera is on video four, we can go ahead and test this by just copying and pasting the command here from our guide. If yours is not on video four, you need to change the option right here to whatever device name the camera you plugged into is showing up on. But in my case, this matches the guide, so I can just paste this in and hit enter. Now I'm going to go back to my mainsail interface and we need to add a webcam. So I'm gonna hit the little gears here, scroll down to webcams, hit add webcam, and we're just gonna give this a name. I'm calling this easy cam and you can see there it's already picked up my camera right here. Hit save, we can close this out and now we have the webcam working. So we know the webcam works, and the problem right now is if we just reboot this, it's not gonna come back up on a restart. So go ahead and press Control C. The webcam will stop responding, and we need to install Nano. We can do that by installing, we can do that by running the OPKG install Nano command. Now, in my case here, this typically doesn't happen, but I'm gonna leave this in the video in case it does happen to you guys. You can see here that the MJPEG streamer session hung and if I keep pressing control C it doesn't do anything so I'm just going to close out my terminal window and then we're going to open a new one and we're going to start by now installing the nano package so go ahead and copy that command paste it in hit enter and now we're going to make the service here so we'll copy this line here and we want to paste this entire script here from our site into the file here now press control O and then hit enter, and then control X, and now it'll close out. Now we need to make this file that we just made executable, so we're gonna wanna copy this chmod plus x slash etc slash init.d slash s99 mjpeg streamer. Paste it in there, hit enter. So now we're gonna test the service by pasting this in. You can see it started up. Go ahead and press enter, and it will stop. Now at this point, I'm gonna type reboot, and before that, I'm gonna bring up my web interface for the printer, and I'm gonna restart the box. So now at this point, it's restarting, and if you just leave this window open, it typically will reconnect once the device comes back online. And if everything was done correctly, we will have a working webcam, and the default interface for our printer will be mainsail instead of Creality's print interface that is really pretty bad. And there we go, it's reloading. And you can see our webcam came right up. So I'm actually using one of our, our EasyCam cameras. 
And the nice thing about these is they actually have an adjustable focus on here, so they're not gonna try to auto focus all the time like some other cameras do. But at this point now, I can reload the interface and the printer should be all fully up and running. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit the home all button. And just like that, we now got rid of all the Creality's crap on this machine. We have a third party webcam working on it. And now I can go ahead and use this printer like a standard clipper machine. You guys all know that I've been talking about how the cloud stuff is something you should stay away from. Now we've taken this printer from a Creality cloud connected machine to a standard clipper install. Now the only thing that isn't supported in these helper scripts as of the time of making this video is changing out the interface that comes on the actual screen itself. Now personally the stock interface is not terrible, it gets the job done, but I typically access all my printers over the network interface and having mainsail as the interface that I'm accessing the printer through instead of Creality's kind of butchered cloud service interface is a lot better in this and it makes this printer a lot more attractive to use. Overall, I'm fairly happy with the Ender 3 V3KE. So I just want to say thanks for watching. If you guys have an Ender 3 V3KE, I hope you guys enjoyed this little guide on how to get more out of this machine. If you do want to pick up one of our easy cam cameras that we use in this video for the demo, we did put a link in the video description below. If you also want us to remotely do this to your printer, if you're not comfortable doing it yourself, we do offer technical support over the phone and over remote PC control. That means that you can call us and set up an appointment. We can send you information on how we can connect into your computer. And as long as your printer is on the network and your computer can talk to it, we can go ahead and do this entire process that I just demoed here remotely for you in as little as about 30 minutes. With all that said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And as always, happy printing. I'll see you guys on the next one.